All right, great uh, competition out there today. Third down, red area like normal. Um, thought guys had a lot of juice and fire out there on the field and uh, did a great job, can open it up. Any you know explanation for the Pac-12 about the late hit on Bo that was uncalled to? I did not. If you've had three of those now, is there just concern? Like on one hand, it's consistent, but not for in your favor. So is there concern about like late hits on your players that are going on call right now? Yeah, I, I don't know that there's that many. I mean, those are judgment calls in the heat of the moment. Um, I don't think that anybody's blatantly not trying to call late hits on, on our guys. You know, it's football. Um, they're doing the best job that they certainly can do. We, we certainly want to protect our players, and that's always mission one. Monday, you said the effort was increased. Has that carried over to Tuesday to Wednesday? Yeah, I'd say the passion and intensity was a little too much yesterday. Right, and we've got to level that out because there's a there's a you know rule of diminishing returns to where when you have so much juice you can't focus on the job at hand. Um, and today that was much better. Now there was definitely intensity uh, out there on the field, but you know it's the leveling that out and feeling where that passion's at. Were the GPS is as high as they were on Monday, speed wise. Yesterday, uh, yeah, we had good we had good numbers um, yesterday. I haven't seen today's yet. How much the new offensive coordinator there from from Morris to Arbuckle? How much have you changed? Have you seen change there and? What impresses you most of how he's kind of handled play calling? Yeah, uh, well, they create explosive plays, right? They create a lot of explosive plays. Like I said, this really mirrors a lot of what, uh, you know, Texas Tech has done in the past. He came from Western Kentucky. He keeps a lot of the things that they did really well last year um, as part of the system, and they've added some new wrinkles. But obviously, he has an elite quarterback, and he knows how to distribute the ball. You're someone who's dealt with outside noise before a lot this season and last season. How do you, what do you make of the way that Jake Dickert has kind of dealt with a lot of the stuff this year, whether it's conference realignment or... Um, you know, coaching search stuff, but I didn't think he's dealt with that this year. You know, I honestly, I don't know much about it, um, but I'll say this. I'm impressed with Jake. You know, he's a, he's a pro. He does a great job, uh, coaches his tail off. Um, I, you know, I'm familiar with his background, but I don't know much about the outside noise. Cam's had three kickoffs out of bounds, two in that same corner kind of placement. Is there something that he can rectify? You hope that Grant can appear in at least a couple more games for you in that role or? You know, Grant's played for some already. Um, you know, I think Cam can go out there and execute his job at a higher level. And I think Cam would be the first guy to tell you that. So um, it's happened. You know, it's something you got to keep working and improving on. Um, and, and Cam's certainly capable of doing that. Bucky had a career high in carries this past game. And his average is more or less in line with where it was last year. But do you see his role picking up in terms of average carries per game going forward? Or? I think his role will embrace whatever it takes for us to win the game and have success. And uh, he will always do that. But obviously, he's a great back. There's anybody that watches him can see that. We're talking about Poncho on Monday. I'm curious what you see from Ope this year, kind of just helping the younger brother out and kind of getting him up to speed. I, I think I told you guys earlier that Ope is an unbelievable leader. You know, he is a, a voice that everybody respects on our team. Um, he always has a great message. This guy has a smile on his face every single day. He steps here. He knows how blessed he is to be here. He comes from a phenomenal family, and so does Poncho. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's a special guy. What are some of the little things you guys are looking to clean up going into this weekend's game? Probably more than anything, just details, small details of execution, right? And that'll lead to, to success on the field. And the miscommunications on the first two touchdowns defensively, was that a leverage with Jaleel issue on the first one versus the safety? I think it was Evan on there. And on the second one, should two guys have gone to the flat or should a safety stay over the top? Yeah, we should have. Uh, the the uh, second one, there was a miscommunication from a coverage standpoint. The first one's a leverage deal. Poncho was pretty consistently coming for Steven around the second quarter, and then Steven comes back in later in the game. But I'm just curious for the reasoning behind that. Or Yeah, Poncho's playing well enough for us to have winning football, and we feel like if a guy's playing you know, at a level to, to be a winning football player, we want to figure out a way to utilize him and get him in the game. When the team challenges a player like Washington did Quez once he got in, how do you respond like as a coach to putting your players in the best position in that spot, and how do you want a player to respond when they're, they're challenged in that way? Go out there and execute your job. Believe in your technique. Um, you know, and we're, we're always conscientious of where, where people are out on the field. That was a game where there's good players across the field, right? So guys got to go out there and execute. How do you see Mace's role in that strong side backer spot as it's kind of evolved? Because like we talked about before the season, certain teams in this league are not going to be 12 and 13 heavy anymore. So it kind of changes what base is. But how do you see Mace's role and, and what he brings in modern football for this yeah I think Mace is playing some of his best football obviously whenever we go to sub packages he's playing the outside linebacker spot so he goes to the jack spot and plays theirs uh, for us as well um, when teams are big and they do certain things out of personnel we'll be big to match them when they're not then we're going to change our personnel groups to match that and, and Mace has done a good job of that a couple of weeks on the road now how excited are you to get back inside Austin and have a home crowd behind you now yeah there's nothing like playing in front of our crowd here in Austin and uh, our fans are unbelievable I know our players love playing in that stadium so we embrace every single chance we get
just Bo's knowledge of their DC help this week? Just yeah, I don't know that uh, it's. It, I believe. I mean, there's some carryover, but I don't. I don't know that there's necessarily a, a big piece of that. 